Hi, my name is Kyle Mitchell, and I am a forensic scientist with the Oregon State Police and the alternate CODIS administrator. Um, I'm going to be presenting today with you um, with Jamie Schroeder. She's a forensic scientist as well and the CODIS administrator for the Oregon State Police. We're here to talk to you today about the DNA index of special concern or DISC. Um, but before we give you um, information about DISC, we'd like to give you a little bit of background information uh, that will allow us uh, to better describe the rapid DNA process that the FBI is working on, as well as the DISC process. So what is CODIS? CODIS is the Combined DNA Index System. It's the generic term that we use to describe the FBI's uh, DNA database. So a DNA Act uh, 94 allowed the FBI to establish this database, and this database contains samples from people convicted of crimes, uh, it contained profiles from crime scene evidence, and it contained profiles from unidentified human remains. CODIS also describes the different layers uh, within the DNA database system. Um, so the, the highest level uh, is the National DNA Index System, or NDIS. Uh, so in Oregon, this refers to all the different states that we uh, can have our profiles get a match to. Um, so a profile from Oregon can match to a profile in Florida. Um, there are certain parameters that the profiles have to meet to be able to be entered into the national level. Uh, the second layer down is your state level or the state DNA index system, Estes. And this refers to like within Oregon, we have our offender samples and our forensic samples, and we could run um, searches of those profiles within our own state. And then lastly, we have the local DNA index system or LDIS. In Oregon, we don't have any LDIS uh, labs, but an LDIS lab can have a profile that meets the, uh, the level that is needed to be able to be entered into the national level. So we can have a profile in Oregon hit to uh, an LDIS in Florida. So a good picture of how the, the, the layers of CODIS works is, and this is your entire country. So all the states uh, hitting uh, matches can hit across the country. Um, and then your Estes is, is where you can search within your own state. And then Eldis is within that state. So you can see Florida and then the different local labs within Florida. Within CODIS uh, are specific categories or specimen categories and or indexes. Um, and these allow us to group different profiles together. So we can group our offender profiles together and we can group our forensic crime scene profiles together and we can group our unidentified human remains together. And this allow us to, allows us to do controlled searches of specific categories. So not every profile gets searched against every other profile within the CODIS system. Uh, this becomes important for um, understanding DISC and um, the FBI rapid process. Uh, speaking of DISC, uh, again, the DNA index of special concern, there are specific requirements that a profile must meet to be able to be entered into this index. Um, one of the requirements is that it has to be a complete DNA profile from an unsolved case. So a complete DNA profile is what we term as a forensic perfect. It has to have complete genetic information at all the locations that we have tested uh, with whatever technology we are working with at the time. And uh, they have to be from unsolved cases. So it has to be an unsolved homicide or an unsolved rape or an unsolved kidnapping or an unsolved terrorism case. And lastly, um, that profile must have metadata associated with it and there needs to be some extradition information. And I'll discuss a little bit later in this presentation what the metadata is and uh, what that extradition information needs to be. Um, the last category we need to understand is the arrestee index. Um, so in some states, such as California, they have legislation that allows them to uh, collect profiles from people who are arrested of a crime. And then these get put into CODIS in the arrestee category. Oregon does not have legislation um, to be able to do this. Um, however, the arrestee index is highly involved in the FBI's rapid DNA process. So the way 
um, the, the, the current process works is we have a, a fender lab or um, a, an arrestee booking agency collect a sample. So in Oregon, uh, this is the uh, prison intake system. A, a person gets convicted of a felony and then they're required to submit a profile um, to us. And so that collecting agency collects that sample and they may hold that sample for a few weeks trying to get a, a bunch of samples that they could send to the lab. So um, that process can take, you know, three weeks to a month. Once that profile or once that sample is um, submitted to the laboratory, it takes us about 30 to 45 days on average to be able to get a DNA profile from that in Oregon. Um, it can take longer and that does that, you know, that 30 to 45 days doesn't count how much time that local booking agency held on to that sample. So once we're able to develop a profile, it gets put into a specific index, uh, the offender index. And then once it's in CODIS, uh, then it's searched against the other indices within CODIS. So uh, in this particular case, it gets searched against a forensic sample. So in Oregon, we can have an offender sample that hits to a forensic sample. And when we see that hit, we then have to go back and confirm that offender sample to make sure that the profile that we obtain from it is the correct profile. So that confirmation process happens right in here. Um, so we have that takes about um, we shoot for 30 days to turn those confirmations around. Uh, it can be a little bit less than that, um, but we're still looking at a, a process that takes a while. Um, once that sample is confirmed, then uh, we can uh, let the analysts know that they can uh, send a report to the investigating agency telling them, hey, a profile from this burglary matches John Doe. And so this entire process that I've described takes anywhere from two to four months um, from when that person's samples collected um, to when it gets a hit and then ultimately when we're able to release a report to the investigating agency. So it's a long process. What the FBI is looking to do is um, make this process a little bit faster with their rapid program. Uh, this also involves DISC. So if you look in the top left corner, um, this is specific to arresting agencies. Again, Oregon doesn't have the arrestee legislation, but other states do. So if a booking agency is set up for this program, they would have a rapid DNA instrument. And what this rapid DNA instrument does, it allows them to, during the booking process, take a swab from someone's cheek and put it into this rapid machine. That rapid machine is able to produce a profile within two hours. Um, so what used to, you know, what takes us currently 30 to 45 days um, to uh, get the sample done um, is happening in two hours. So once that sample gets, um, once we have a profile from that sample, it gets automatically searched and you can see this arrow going down to the DNA uh, index of special concern. So that's where Oregon comes in. So if we can get profiles into this, um, to this program, then potentially profiles from uh, an arrestee can hit to that sample. So what happens if we do get a hit, so that person's profile gets entered in and then searched against disk, and then within minutes, a notification can go out to the booking agency, the arresting agency, and the investigating agency, letting them know, hey, the profile from John Doe matches a hom unsolved homicide case in Oregon. Um, you guys need to, to, to communicate back and forth, and then maybe this person who was arrested for whatever crime is still within that booking process, and the investigating agency can say, hey, hold that person, we would like to question them on a homicide in Oregon. So a good, good way to think of this is, um, say we have a homicide in Oregon and um, there's a, a blood trail from the, the suspect. The suspect cut themselves and we know that the blood belongs to the person who committed this homicide. And so we develop a profile from that. It gets entered into the DISC program. Well, uh, while all this is occurring, that person is fleeing down to California and holding up. 
and uh, they end up getting arrested for, let's say, excessive speeding. If they get arrested and they're still within that booking process, um, and that booking agency has one of these rapid DNA instruments, then that profile gets developed in two hours, searched, and then your agency gets notified, hey, John Doe just hit to your unsolved homicide. Um, you could reach out and then say, hey, hold this person, and then maybe work on extradition. That's the idea slash concept behind the, uh, the FBI rapid process. So what used to take two to four months is now taking hours. Another depiction of how that works is, a, again, just uh, the person gets arrested. Uh, they take a swab of the inside of the cheek. It gets put in a rapid DNA instrument. That rapid DNA instrument develops a DNA profile, which is searched against the disk. And then if a match occurs, a um, message goes out to the arresting agency, booking agency, and investigating agency via inlets. Inlets is a uh, interstate justice network uh, that allows law enforcement to exchange information uh, across state lines. Um, so they can uh, do everything from standard driver's license, vehicle queries, criminal history, um, as well as now uh, these um, disk slash rapid DNA matches. Here is what that notification looks like via inlets. At the top, it gives a uh, clear description that there's a subject that is potentially linked to an unsolved crime of special concern. Um, it gives the, at the top in blue uh, the booking agency information associated with the person who got arrested. And then in the bottom is the uh, information from the investigating agency. So this is where you guys come in. This is the metadata I alluded to earlier um, that we need to have for each case so that that's automatic notification can occur. Um, and at the bottom, I've circled will extradite. So that's something that um, you must be willing to do for the profile to be even considered uh, to be enrolled in this program, this, this program, is that your jurisdiction must be willing uh, to seek extradition if a match occurs. Um, and then ultimately we know that uh, sometimes it's not up to you to decide whether uh, you're gonna be able to commit that extradition. Um, so we can also put a, a, a pending extradition determination um, in that field. However, we still wanna make sure that these are um, profiles that we are sure we are trying to, to seek that extradition for. Uh, this is a serious crime, a serious unsolved homicide, or a serious rape um, that if we were to get a match, we would be pursuing this individual. Um, so to get this process going, the uh, forensic lab is going to be sending out um, disk notifications. Um, I just want to reiterate that this is just a draft. Uh, this isn't exactly what that uh, final report will look like, um, but we are currently working on that and it should look something similar to this report. And basically what this report is going to say is that um, this case has a DNA profile that's eligible for DISC. Uh, it's going to give a brief description of what that DISC process is. It's also going to reference um, this PowerPoint, which will be on our OSB website for, your, um, for you to look at as a resource. Uh, and it's going to have either a hyperlink to the metadata form that you're going to be required to fill out, or it's going to be a part of the Word document um, that you're uh, going to have to fill out for um, you to be able to get this profile into GIST. Lastly, it's going to talk about also where you could find that metadata form on the Oregon State Police website. And then it's going to let you know that you have two weeks to let us know whether this profile um, you want it to be entered into DISC. Um, if you decide if it, it takes longer to get the metadata information, um, you can always contact us and send that out and let us know. Hey, yeah, we still want this uh, involved in the rapid uh, DNA process or in the DISC program, um, but uh, after two weeks, we will automatically designate that as not eligible and we can revisit it later if needed. Here's what that metadata sheet looks like. Uh, so this is what you'll have to fill out in order for a profile to be entered into DISC. You see the top three lines are gonna be filled out by lab staff. 
So you're only required to fill out uh, this main portion. And then everything uh, denoted with an asterisk is required. So you have to have an answer or have that filled out for us to be able to get this profile in. The first one is the investigative agency ID. This is your uh, ORI for your investigative agency that is monitored 24 hours a day for NCIC hit confirmation. The rest are pretty self-explanatory. Your case tracking ID, uh, that's just your case number. Um, you can see that the case alias and the investigator email address are not required fields. However, the more information you have on there, the easier it is. So if someone were to get a notification and it says green belt killer or whatever um, term you have for this particular case, it may make it easier to be able to identify that this is a, a very important profile that we need to do something with. Um, the investigator phone number, statute of limitations, offense description, and extradition information. So this is what I talked about, that where you need to have at a minimum, yes, willing to extradite. So it could just be the answer of yes. Or pending extradition means uh, that, that um, we can also put that profile in. Um, and lastly, a good agency contact. So not only are you having your 24 hour monitor, but we also need someone um, who's available uh, to be able to make that phone call to the uh, booking agency to say, hey, hold on to this person. Um, we would like to question them about um, a homicide in Oregon. Um, so this information needs to be accurate and up to date. So lastly, uh, or not lastly, if you fill out uh, the metadata sheet, um, we will um, enter that profile into disk if it's filled out adequately, and we'll enter that profile into disk, and you'll get a report from us saying that your profile has been entered, entered has been entered into disk. And then to please let us know if you are no longer willing to seek extradition for this case, a match were to occur. Again, this is a draft of what that report should, you know, is going to look like. Um, it could be slightly different. So what to expect from us is we are going to uh, do this kind of in a stepwise fashion. We're going to first look at our current technology and the uh, forensic perfect samples um, that we have eligible for DISC. And then we're going to send out these notifications to your agencies to let you know these are um, that your profile is available for DISC or eligible for DISC. Um, once we do uh, the current technology, we're going to evaluate that for a few months, see how the program is going, see if everything's working smoothly, um, see what kinks can work out. And then we're going to move into some of our older cases, our old homicides, old cases, um, and start sending out uh, disc eligible notifications for those. Uh, uh, as usual, if you have a profile that you uh, think would be a perfect fit for this program, please reach out to us and let us know. But you have to keep in mind that we need these to be complete profiles. Um, so that's why we are sending out the notifications to you. Um, we can help you assess whether you have a complete profile for a specific case, um, but uh, you just have to reach out um, for that information. And then lastly, um, we have to do as part of be at, if the Oregon State Police to be part of this DISC program, we have to annually recertify those profiles that are in the DISC program. So what that means for you is that we're going to reach out to you every year and say, are you still willing to seek extradition for this case? Um, and if we don't hear from you, uh, we will be taking it out of the DISC program. Um, so expect that to come at some point if you were to have a profile get entered into the DISC program. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to give uh, Jamie or I a call um, or send us an email. Uh, the contact information is um, on this slide. Thank you for your attention.